Jacqueline, there are some qualities I thought I was looking for in a spouse before I truly knew God. Height, hair color, loves dogs, smells good, gym attendance, similar career goals, a top-notch cook, athletic, understands engineering stuff, good sense of fashion. While some of these qualities remain important to me, and you embody many of them, there was a point where my deeper relationship with the Lord opened my eyes to a new set of characteristics that became far superior. I wasn't looking for someone with exterior qualities the world had pumped up and made the focal point of a woman. In fact, I wasn't even looking at all, and I didn't need to because there was nowhere to look besides someone I had already known all along. Someone I respected and who stayed up late helping me through many of the challenges I faced in my single life. I realized what I was truly looking for was a woman of God who could get through the hard times, not on her own ability, but through her steadfast reliance on the Lord. She could maintain hope in those hard times and remind me how to as well. These are some qualities I knew I was looking for once I truly knew God. Joyful, encouraging, a deep relationship with their Creator and seeking to go deeper, challenges me in my relationship with the Creator, servant to others, willingness to learn from mistakes instead of making excuses, fight for truth, love selflessly, a best friend, someone with purposeful endurance, a fighter, relies on God more than themselves, and a half-decent cook at best. I'd say I found these things, but I think I'd be giving myself too much credit. God revealed these things to me in you, and I've never once looked back or second-guessed my decision to pursue you till the day I die. Proverbs 31:29, which is speaking about a woman who fears the Lord, essentially sums you up when it says, Many women have done excellently, but you have surpassed them all. I vow to love you more than myself, be patient with you, display kindness every single day, humble myself and honor you, do things out of reverence for God, not myself, not be easily angered, keep no record of wrongs, rejoice in the truth, protect you, trust you, maintain hope, and always persevere. Always be good to you, always be faithful to you, always be gentle with you, and always practice self-control. I vow to set a godly example for our children, love you as hard as I can so they can learn and see how a husband loves his wife just as Jesus loved the church. Be a strong foundation for our family, recognize God as the ultimate provider of our family, not me. Die to myself every single day, pursue you, date you, cherish you, and lift you up. Why can I say all these things with such boldness and confidence? I know God wrote this relationship, not me. He was the inception. It wasn't birthed by my flesh-like desires to attain you, but rather his servant heart motives to pursue and serve you. These motives continuously fuel me to love you to the best of my abilities. I promise to do that for the rest of my life. I love you, Jacqueline Camille Hunt. When a foundation is built, it ensures that a house stays where it is supposed to be. The depth and the dimensions of the foundation are dependent on what's being built. The forms are staked into the ground to remain in place when the concrete is poured. It is critical that the forms are level. In a slab foundation, a layer of gravel is added within the foundation perimeter. Wire mesh is laid for reinforcement, and concrete is poured within the defined areas after conduits are in place. With all that being said, I've never built a house before and I know little to none on how it all works. But God knows. When I asked him what I should say about my husband, he said, you have built your foundation on me. Matthew 7, 24. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Foundations can't withstand storms, weight, and pressure unless built properly. One, the forms represent the shape of the exterior wall. When forms aren't level, your home will not be level. We are called to be equally yoked, 2 Corinthians 6.14, having a full pursuit of Jesus and loving him. Two, the concrete has to be poured within the defined areas. Jesus has to be a part of every area of our life, not just how we look on the outside, but every little detail inside, every part of who we are in full surrender to Jesus, every room in our house with the light on and no darkness. To everyone, keeping all the lights on sounds expensive, but luckily the light of Jesus pays our electric bill. He has dug up all our dirt, all our mistakes, and covered it with the cross. 
He has filled every part of our relationship, from best friends to dating to engaged to now soon married and the rest of our lives. You have shown me what the love of the Father looks like and it shows in your fruits, in your love, in your joy, in your peace, in your patience, in your kindness, in your goodness, in your faithfulness, in your gentleness, in your self-control. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. God has been doing work in you long before I came around, not just to love me and raise our children, but to show Christ's love to his children. Kyle, I vow to love you as long as I live. I will serve you and bless you with the words of my mouth. I will honor you and respect you and the man of God created you to be. We will build our home on Jesus Christ, a strong foundation. How I love you is how I reflect the love of Christ has for all of us. How I love you is how I thank God for the blessing you are. When we are in gratitude for everything we have, we won't focus on what happened to us, but what Christ has done for us. My heart of gratitude for you is deeper than the ocean and is as far from the east as to the west. I know God loves me because of who he gave me to be my husband and who is going to raise God-fearing, prayer warrior, Jesus-loving, devil-stomping children. I vow to protect our home in prayer, in speaking life, in giving life, in being in the world and not of it, in covering every room in gratitude, in being in full surrender to Jesus, and bringing all things into his light. Kyle Braden Hildebrand, I will love you forever and for always, no matter what. We will worship and serve our Lord Jesus Christ together for all the days of our life, and our generation we create and start, and our children and our children's children will know the love of God and share the grace we have received with all they meet. Thank you for creating with me a foundation that isn't afraid of depth, that isn't afraid to face the mirror, that isn't afraid to surrender, that isn't afraid to let go, that isn't afraid to rest in the presence of God, that isn't afraid to trust, that isn't afraid to have God establish our steps. Perfect love casts out all fear in loving all of you because that is what Christ has done for me.